Like, why can we see? Yeah, for sure. For sure this moved. All right, let me do this. All right. I'm live on YouTube, too. Who's that? Oh, man. I'll get it. What's up, YouTube? Can't move that. Oh, if I do this, yeah, perfect. Okay, sorry, just getting the angles. All right. Why not make it look perfect, right? Okay. So I know somebody has now popped into YouTube. If you're rewatching this on YouTube, I'm gonna start right at 11, um, although I might start warming up beforehand. Uh, but you can fast forward three minutes, three, four minutes, and you'll be good. Um, yes, and happy birthday. If you mean my zero with birthday, thank you. I'm glad you can hear me, Rod. If you mean my zero with birthday, in the studio here, then uh, I thank you. Otherwise, you're wrong, it's in May. Hey, I have the same birthday as uh, one, one or two of you guys. I have the same birthday as Maria Albini, Officer Albini from West Hartford. We got the same birthday. So, um, let's see. You know, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna start warming up. I'm the littlest bit early, but honestly, that's okay. Oh, you know what? In one moment, I'm gonna do that. Let me get my workout in front of me. So I know I've got it. What are the class notes? Okay. Cool. Well, uh, let's do this. Let's start, just get uh, a little bit warmed up in your hands and feet. Don't go crazy. There's a lot more, there's like stone floors in my house now. And I, and I guess I didn't realize how much harder stone is than hardwood. But um, now arm circles. But I don't know if it lent to some sort of a calf tightness or something, but uh, it was definitely harder to walk around in the morning. Put this in a couple little rugs. Okay, we're just moving our shoulders. Basically, I'm doing what I can't see because half of me will disappear for some of you guys. Stand up. Switch your hands on top when you do this. Just a little bit different part of the muscle. Okay, let's look, uh, look left, right. So, look left. Look right. Make it a stretch. Okay, look up and down. Hey, Steve. Just warm up our necks. Okay, ear to shoulder. I'm going to make a small adjustment. Keep going ear to shoulder. Oh, that's better. Now roll your neck. Other way. Oh, good. <clears throat> All right. Let's lay down and just do foot circles, right? So I'm just doing circles with my feet here. 
And when I do this, it's okay. I have your knees point one way and then the other way as you draw your circles. It means your hips have to move. If you can see my hips sh sort of shoveling along the ground. Other way. If it's a surface that's hard to do this move, hip movement, I like to like rest on my hands here a little bit to allow my hips to move. Okay. That's because we're going to be doing some like hip motion. Let's put one foot on one knee and lean back and away. Look over your shoulder. I'm stretching my hip flexor here and letting my low back sort of unwind. Same thing, other side. Last night I actually slept on the couch because I have to build my new bed. I slept on my old bed the first night, totally took it apart, thought I would finish last night. Got caught up doing something else, everything else. Oh, I, I do the kids class and stuff I hadn't accounted for, so um, uh, today I have to build a bed. Now lean forward, same thing, other side. Uh, foot on your knee, and I'm leaning forward now, and this gives me, you know, what is essentially like this pigeon, pigeon pose kind of stretch. But I'm just, I'm feeling my butt stretch is what's happening right now. Man, I gotta do what I'm doing with the kids with you guys. We gotta have like a, a Kahoot night. These like online interactive quizzes that are like live and timed, and there's all like music and animations. They're super fun. They're not juvenile. I mean, like a little bit, but that's just fun. Um, I'm going to do one with the adults, like a trivia night or something, because it is, it really is super fun. I got the idea from one of the kids who told me, if you guys are parents, you may already know about cahoots, but, um, one of the kids told me, Hey, this is what my teachers do. We all kind of like it. So I looked it up and then I started building cahoots and like these quizzes are super fun. So we have that to look forward to. All right, cool. Um, so you're not leaving anything out? No, that's good. All right. So short explanations today. Today's the third time I'm doing side knot escapes, side control escapes. Short, if they're not juvenile, oh. <laughs> All right, they're, they're juvenile enough. Okay. Short explanations today, and then we're going to get into um, uh, repping, where hopefully, again, I, I was mentioning this before, you know, when I talk for a while for a technical explanation, but then like I'm repping and I want to talk less, it comes down, doesn't it, to like a mantra, to like arm, ankle, leg, turn, you know? And those are the things that'll like stick with you and maybe you can use when you're rolling. Like the first hundred times you may, you may remember those, that little mantra. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to describe, uh, you know, in detail uh, once or twice, and then I'm just going to try and get it down to a mantra and we're going to get a bunch of reps if we can. So side non escaping. If I'm here and some and the person is on this side of me, their head's over here, but their body's over here, I'm doing this. My elbow. Elbow is at the hip bone, not my wrist, which can get, they can just lean on it and crush it, right? That's their leverage on me. So this right here, this my humerus goes right into my shoulder blade into the floor. So that's where that is. This is under the far armpit, and you can almost see the invisible opponent that I'm sort of holding here. Okay. Now my leg on the far side creeps out. And you know it's a heel toe. I don't go, okay, well, heel toeing takes a while. I don't do that because the reason, because uh, I want to have my feet on the ground. If you watch Pedro Sauer roll, you, I strongly recommend you watch Pedro Sauer roll with his black belts and brown belts, which there's a bunch of videos online. Um, that's only people he rolls with. Uh, he always, feet are married to the floor. Feet are always married to the floor and he gets all his power from there. So moi, heel toe, heel toe. Now put your toes down and move your lower body back. Once your lower body is moved back, it's upper body time. You're going to put your hand uh, on the hip bone and back your lower um, shoulder away. So now when this arm was longer before, and then I did this, now this arm is longer, okay? So that's that's the that's the metaphor he uses as well, or the, the thing he points, detail he points to. Okay, now that I'm here, I'm gonna put my knee in at an angle, in, you know, his legs are posted here, and I'm coming through the hip gap to here, step over everything. Step over my leg, step over his leg, which is on the floor back there. Now, 
put my toes down. I've actually got his leg here between my legs. So when I shovel my hips under and sort of pinch my legs together, he, he rocks over to here. And now his leg is sort of usually in the air here. I'm talking any size guy. I can do this to Justin. I can do this to anybody. Put my hand on the leg. C grip is fine. Push it away. And then just catch that one too. Okay. I'm going to describe this one twice. And then we're just going to do some. Right. So set up your hands. Right. Now I got my right elbow on the hip. So I'm going to use rights and lefts. So right, right elbow on the hip, left hand across the stomach and under the far armpit. Now walk the outside leg, inside toes, back your hips up, okay? Now hand on the hip, switch your shoulders. Now I'm gonna pick this knee up, put it in at an angle. My foot is near, but not hooking his hip. It's not, not stopping anything back in there, but it, it is like sort of hooked around his hip. Step over everything, put all your toes on the ground. And I've got a leg between my legs now. So when I do this, he kind of comes off the ground. This one's floating. I put my C grip on it, push it in, and I catch him back in full guard. Okay. So let's do this movement together. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna chip down the words that I use. Okay. So uh, set up your arms, right? Outside leg, inside toes. Now switch your shoulders. That's lower body and then upper body. Okay. Now this leg goes in at an angle, the near leg. Step over everything, put all your toes down, shovel underneath, and then catch the leg. So set your arms up, do your lower body, upper body, put your knee in, step over everything, toes down, hip under, and catch. Set up your arms, lower body, upper body, put your knee in, step over, shovel under, and catch. Outside leg. I got to pitch on, I'm pinned to the ground, so I am actually starting flat, sacrum flat. So I walk this foot out, that's what this does. Lower body, boom. Upper body, block the hip, switch your shoulders. Catch his leg, shovel underneath, and catch. Okay, so the elbow escape is uh, lower body, upper body, and then the elbow escape. Put my knee in, catch his leg, and shovel underneath, catching his leg. I'm gonna do two more. Okay. So I'm flat. Lower body, upper body, elbow escape. Catch his leg. And last one. Lower body, upper body, elbow escape. Catch his leg. The end. Okay. Let's do a few on the other side. We had way less in, uh, technical instruction this time. So we have. We can do the other side. Now, elbow. It's the other elbow now because well, let's get your bearings. Let me get my bearings. The other elbow is in the hip. This hand is across underneath and holding uh, his torso here. So there's my invisible opponent. Okay. Now, I'm going to elbow. I'm going to, yeah, elbow skate now. Uh, lower body first. Upper body. Now my leg on the ground goes in first, knee first. Step over everything. All your toes on the ground, shovel underneath, and catch the leg. Getting that last leg push with your left hand now. So my elbow is in the hip pocket here. Oop. Other arms under the far armpit. Okay, now set up your legs, walk your feet. Set up your shoulders. Okay, now near leg inside, step over everything. Toes down, shovel under, catch the leg. Elbow in the hip, other arm on the far side. This is your setup. Okay, now elbow escape, outside leg, inside toes, right? Now switch your shoulders, inside leg, step over, all toes in, shovel under, and catch the leg here. Let's do three more on this side. I know we did more on the other side. You know, usually people do end up on your right side. It's just how most people pass. But obviously we have to be good on both sides, so. 
Set up. All right, now lower body, upper body, elbow escape. Toes down, shovel under, catch. Set up your arms. Okay, lower body, upper body, elbow escape. Catch the leg. Lower body, upper body, elbow escape, and catch the leg. Okay, so now we've done uh, the elbow escape. Good. That's the Pedro Sauer elbow escape. That that crowbar action at the end when we sort of like when I say put all toes down and then like sort of pinch your knees and bring it to the ceiling. That crowbarring your person up. I mean, that's very in my mind. That's very specific to Pedro Sauer. I mean, I've seen a lot of the old schoolers. Uh, do jiu jitsu, and I've seen um, uh, Hickson do something like this. And so I, I, I have the feeling that, you know, there's a certain point in time when Hickson and Pedro Sauer were learning from Elio that this was the thing, and this is the one that stuck. So th that this school, our school, our lineage, you know, this is an elbow escape unique to this lineage. I had not seen it until I was under Pedro Sauer, and I this is the one I see his guys do. So uh, that's our move. That's our move right there. Okay. Uh, another Pedro Sauer. Uh, Maybe it's not a Pedro Sauer specialty, but it's one that I never really did until I was um, under him, and, and really only until recently. So, same arm setup, right? And same leg setup in the beginning, right? So I'm gonna lower body, right? Left the hip, upper body, I turn, okay? But now instead of inserting this leg, we do, we do something different, right? And I'll tell you the time that we should do this one. If his arms were on the other side of me, but he brings this arm over to here and blocks my knee escape, that's the win. Okay, Pedro Sauer teaches the elbow escape. He says, if he puts the arm on the near side, basically he's not blocking my hip on the other side, or you know, both these things are true. When he puts his hand here, he's blocking an elbow escape. I can't get this knee in that space if he's on top. And he brought his hand here to the near side, blocking my hip. So that's true about that movement of his, blocks the elbow escape. But the other thing that's true about it is it frees up this space over here where there was a hand there. Uh, now he only has the hand over my head, not over my hip on the far side. So this is the way we take advantage of it. I've set up entirely here, switch my shoulders. Okay. And now maybe he puts his hand here. Now I do this. One more step backwards with the outside foot because now you see I'm going north-south. I was set up perpendicular to you. So as I go north, south to you, that's what we're doing to our opponent. I step out one more time. And then this, I'm just going to move my foot so you can see it. This foot threads underneath. And I'm going to come up to here. Okay. Now this hand here was the elbow hand, was the hip hand. This is the one that was blocking the hip. This one that was under the far armpit ends up going, I'm putting it on the, I'm going to put it on the floor. But that represents right here. As I get up, I'm putting my hand right here on my guy, on their thigh. Okay. So having done my lower body and upper body, so this is the this is the breaking point between the two moves we just did. Now I'm going to do this: step back a little further and thread the needle with this foot. This one's coming underneath here, and this hand that was under the far armpit goes to their leg, leg. And when I get up, I have to keep my hand float. It's floating. It's not on me. Floating here. Because if I can be my own enemy for a second, you know, freeze frame me right there. If someone's getting up in front of me, I'm going to go for a, a, a head control every time, uh, if not guillotine, right? So we were just here with my hand here. When this hand comes in, I'm going to catch this wrist. I'm going to catch it. When I catch it, his armpit is above my head, right? And his body is here. So when I get up, inside leg first, that's notice my center, center of my um, inside knee step up here. Now, again, I'm in his armpit. So when I start cutting the corner, I move his torso. Sometimes you can block the knee and knock the person over to side mount. Sometimes they're immovable. They're like, I'm not moving, but I have control over the arm. So what's happening to them is this. So I can shed the arm and take the back right here if they're immovable. What's not immovable is going to be their arm in this case, because I control it at the wrist at the end of the lever. All right, walk your foot out. Feet out, 
shoulder switch. Now, step back, come through this hand that was in the armpit is a leg hand. This hand stays with my neck, stays with my neck. Ready to catch his hand. Center your knee, step up this one, cut the corner, maybe the side mount. That's probably crazy loud for you guys. Okay. That mat slapping. All right. Lower body. Upper body. Now go north south. Hand to the floor. Uh, with the under the under hand to the floor. I'm on the other elbow. So this is my position right now. I look like this. Mm. Or from this side, I look like this. That's probably a good angle to see. I got one leg straight and this leg here. And that's just because I was. I had turned my shoulders down, came out, boom. And I'm here, and that's why I end up in this position here with my over here. This is the good way to get up. This hand, by the way, is on his leg, but the floor is his leg right now. Now I'm going to center, get up, cut the corner, and put myself on top. Okay, that's the last long explanation on that one. Let's do some reps, right? So lower body. That's my knee. Shoulder switch. Now go north-south a little more. Thread the needle. This hand to the floor, this elbow to the floor. Catch his hand when it comes through. Center your knee, step up to the outside, and come around. Here, lower body, upper body. Now, it's not 12 steps for me to go north south. I don't go cut, 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 cut. Really. I go one, two, and I'm here. Inside knee, outside knee, cut the corner. Maybe I'm on his back. Maybe I got side control. Okay. Elbow in the hip, not the hand. Elbow under here. Lower body. Upper body. Take one step. Two steps. And now I'm here. Inside knee. Outside knee. And come up. I'm gonna do two more here. Okay. Lower body. Upper body, go north, south, inside knee, outside knee. Okay. Okay. This, this, this is, uh, you know, it's like there's this term building up. So if a, like a police officer is arresting somebody and they're on the ground and they're they're belly down. Building up is a horrible thing. You don't want someone who's here to start successfully building up, right? And then you're building up a foundation in order to get up and have position, positional, some positional power or advantage, right? And that's what we're doing here. The reason I feared this particular elbow escape for a while was this moment right here. He's above me. He's behind me. That's bad. That's bad. And he's going to go for a choke, and I know it. That's three bads. But me knowing it is actually what tempers it. You know, The fact that I know it and I can catch the arm and I'm going to be using it against them. By the way, if you get up to here and they don't wrap your neck, you know, you can get up to a neutral position. So there's, there's no reason not to get up to a neutral position there. It's just that if I'm, if I'm excuse me, here uh, and he does go for it and I get his hand, you know, that, I have a lever now. I'm the guy to turn him over. So that's the idea. Okay, that's uh, I would practice that on the other side too, guys, um, but we won't right now. Okay, so that's elbow escapes and the belly down escape. All right, now uh, I'm I'm showing this one other one that that has been like very useful to me um, as like a guy who likes to set traps and and uh, let people walk into trouble. They didn't know it was there. And it uses the same underhook. So like all these have to do with this position, this body position where I'm under the underhook. Okay. And it's just the elbow trap reversal or the darce reversal. Okay. So I'm going to back my lower body away, back my upper body away. And if I goof and open a space or if I, or if they force a space or if I, maybe I'm baiting it, I don't recommend it. Like you don't get in trouble for no reason, but I'm not going to deny that I do it. Okay. So if I open this and someone wants a head and arm choke right here, they're going to be, taking their hip side arm. Here's their, here are their shoulders. One, two. They're going to be taking their, uh, oh, which one is it? They're going to be taking their, yeah, hip side hand across their body and doing, doing this. Coming from my armpit, behind my head, and going for a darts on me. 
Okay, so that's why I don't want to be here where that's easy. Um, so it's basically a don't be here thing because you get caught. Okay, but sometimes, you know, who knows? They force it through and they're on their way through this path here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I've already got on my side. They come through that space. I'm going to do this. Catch the hand as it comes through. So picture you're on top of me, right? You're facing me. Take your hip side hand, put it under my armpit. And as, you, as it comes through, you notice I'm catching your wrist as it comes through. Here's your elbow. And you'll notice if you're imagining while you watch me that you're doing it, that I actually have a ton of uh, control over your shoulder girdle. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to block your hip and stiff arm. So I'm locking my arm out. Block your hip. Now walk your hips underneath the person. My hips are going to run into their legs. And here my hand is on their hip, remember. And they're going all the way across my hips. My Their hips across my hips. And I'll end up in top side position. It's a good Dars reversal or escape. Uh, you know, and again, I, I can't publicly, privately we'll talk. I can't publicly recommend you put yourself, you know, here and be like, hey, because you, you, you're going to get choked. We have guys who are real good at Darces, okay? So we're here, hips out, fix your shoulders, open your elbow, catch the wrist, clamp, lock the hip. And now I'm walking my hips underneath. And you notice when I, and, and now I'm on top, okay? As my hips go. I was facing that way. Here's the direction I'm facing. And I go, and by the time I'm facing this way, I should be getting up and on top. Okay. Lower body, upper body. Oops, there was space. They come in, catch the hand, close, block their hip. Now walk back right toward them. And you notice I don't do this because they're next to me. If I do this, I only give them, you know, I only give them the opportunity to flatten me out. Okay. So I don't do that. Here's them on the ground. I walk into it and I continue to walk into it. It comes off the ground, hit them, and now I'm on top. So, lower body, upper body. Catch the wrist, catch the elbow, block the hip, walk in, and get up. Lower body, upper body, oops, catch their hand, clamp. Lock the hip and walk in. Leave your hip where it is in space and don't go belly up until you're under your hand. So I'm still facing it. Okay, now I can go belly up. Set up. Lower body. Upper body. Oops. Catch the wrist. Clamp to catch. Block the elbow. Block the, what's this thing called? Hips. Right? And again, stay on your right side until your hips are under your hand. Then you can go flat. Good. Last, sorry, last one. Let's do one more. Set up. Okay. Lower body. Upper body. And this opens. Catch the wrist, clamp. Block the hip, walk in. You may notice there's another one of these threading motions to help you get up. That thread the needle idea, getting up to knees, building up, right? Building up to a foundation for having bent belly down is a big is a big thing. It's everywhere. Um, and I, honestly, I think that belly down side mount escape uh, is one of the best places to learn it because the stakes are so high if you don't, if you don't do it right, get away from the guy and then thread the needle, stay close and, and build your foundation up. Okay. That's just a tricky one. That Dars reversal, just a tricky one. So um, lastly, let's do this. Uh, the ratchet escape, and it's going to put us in dogfight. We talk about some dogfight stuff. So the ratchet escape, so when we're on our back, starts in the same position that's all of these are here and i want you to want to be here here meaning not here or here or here or here you know anything else i want your arm under your your arm that's that's you know chum the, you know the shark on top of you this is like chum this arm so you want to hide it under their armpit okay so i'm here um and we're gonna talk about how i can use this one that's under their armpit to like actually help me escape out the back door but what the, the time that you cannot do that is when they squish it. So how do they squish it? Well, they can't squish it like this. They have to move down my body. So when they move down my body, um, I have to I have to find a way when they've taken this lever away, and now they're heavy at the end of the lever, to get my lever back and have it be like longer, right? With a longer lever, I'll be more successful. So I'm here. They move down my body. I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to put my hand right here, right inside of my leg, you notice? And what this does, what this does is it nudges them up. Now I'm holding them with my leg and my arm and I can, I can come here. So it's, I'm nudging them back up. You know, chest to chest is the better place to hold a person knee down, right? But if they have the feeling I'm gonna try and like use this and get out the back door, they might, they might move down here. Now my arm is straight. They're at the end of the lever. I can't get it up. So I'm gonna do this. With my hand between my, my knees, my hand between my knees, I'm gonna nudge them in the armpit. If you need power for that, that's what this is for. Boom. Nudge them in the armpit. Okay, now, since they're here, I look how much stem I have now. I have like my whole lower arm. But that doesn't mean I wanna bend my arm around the person. What I want is a straight arm, okay? And my elbow rests like on my ribs or hips, and I'm gonna do this. I bump them back up, boom, and now I do this. So I, you might stomp the ground. You might get a, you know, a lot of surprise effect at of, of stomping the ground, a lot of explosiveness. Okay, and unless the person's way smaller than me, they probably didn't just just go flying. But that'll happen. You you can go boom and they go flying, and now you can just get up because they're over there. Happens. Instead of that, we're gonna do this. So they come down me. I nudge them up and then boom. I probably got their chest up to like here. But now I'm gonna do this, put my hips down and try to leave my arm behind and then do it again. And this time I'm gonna, and that got their weight off me. That means I have room to move myself down and I do it this way. Okay, so if you look at the position I'm in, I'm almost, uh, I used the other day, I used the description that I'm looking at the bottom of previous me's chin, right? I was here and I, I want to look over my shoulder as I, move myself down. How do I move myself down? I'm like sort of pulling with my heels actually. So it's, I'm pulling it specifically, I'm pulling with my left heel. This is my left arm that's straight. I go one, two. So my left heel pulled me. I'm looking over my shoulder, my arm's super high, okay? And now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna switch my legs and come up. Now, what I just did was, was this, boom and get up, and the person's shins are here. So I actually straddled one of their shins. These are their shins on the ground. And, I, and I've actually got them here and I'm holding their waist. Now the good thing about straddling these shins is if he's just next to me, and my hands are on his waist, you know, if you think about what you would do for a second, if you're next to someone and they're just holding your waist and there's nothing holding you where you are, I mean, you're gonna come around head to head, try to put yourself on top and, um, and attack from there, right? Um, especially if my head is low. If as I was getting up, my head was low, you know, you'd just come around to here, you'd be head to head, you'd squish me with your chest and now you can start putting arms in, okay? When I straddle someone's lower legs, I don't think I've ever really talked about why dog fight's effective. When I'm holding the hips and they try to turn north south, they can't leave this shin behind. There's only, there's only so much of, um, if someone's uh, straddling this shin, there's only so much of leaving my, my shin behind that I can do, okay? If someone's next to me, I'm gonna go here. Someone straddles my shin, I might start to try, but when I can't move this leg, you know, there's hip torque action. It's not comfortable uh, and I can't get. So I'm, I'm a little bit stuck next to them. And that's what we're taking advantage of uh, when we get up to this position. We're straddle the near one, the near uh, shin, hold the waist. And for me, I'm keeping my ear against their ribs on this side. You can come up here and again, you'll be above them and we can attack the back. Uh, but it's actually not my go-to because we, uh, we have some stuff that's like, very simple to hit from here. Uh, that you can go for. Also, you may not always get up to here before they whiz or and do some other stuff that we're gonna talk about. So let's all do this motion together again. It was my left heel after ratcheting that I pulled myself with. Okay. And again, this maybe not moving them, maybe stopping them where they are so that when I move, I can see, I can get myself out, right? Okay. Let's do the motion, motion, motion too. I hold the body. They go down my body, I'm gonna go nudge, and then one, two, I look over my shoulder, I hold their waist, switch my legs, and I come up. Let's do that motion. This is side knot to dog fight, and then we'll do some dog fight stuff, okay? Set up, I'm holding them. Now, bring them down here, they, they bring themselves down my belly, but for now. Move your hands down here. Now, nudge, ratchet one, ratchet two. Hold the waist, switch your legs, straddle their lower leg, which we are imagining, okay? Okay, set up your guy, 
They go down your body. Nudge them up. Ratchet one. Ratchet two. Hold the waist. Switch your legs. And now I've straddled the lower leg. We're going to do two more. Okay. Uh, they try to like shorten my, my lever here by going down the body. I nudge. Ratchet one. Ratchet two. Switch your legs. Get up and hold the waist. Last one. Take them down. Nudge them up. Ratchet one. Ratchet two. I'll use my left heel for that. Hold the waist. Switch your legs. Okay. And get up to here. Now, here I am. Right? I'm next to my guy. I'm in dogfight. Let's knock him over and just get on top. Okay? That's plan A. Plan A, always knock him over, get on top. His legs are here, holding his waist. I can, I, and my ears against his ribs. So I can see underneath. So I can see his, his posted other knee. So I'm going to just put my hand around it. I'm just going to cup it. Right? Cup the knee. Now drive in to them. What happens is you, you grab this, you drive into them, you knock them over like this. They're going to try to catch your leg with these little flailing legs here. So what we want to do is the movement looks like this. After I knock them over, I sort of kick this leg up and back. It's almost a back step. So that I can get to the uh, side knot, top of side knot. Okay, I was here, I'm holding the waist. Tap the knee, we call it. Tap the knee, drive in when they fall over. I just bring that leg out of the picture because this guy is gonna try to create a hook. I know I do. I know that's what I'm trying to do, create a hook here. Catch the leg, lift you up and turn to face you, maybe a butterfly or something, okay? So we don't want that to happen, hold the waist. Knee tap, drive in, back step, nice little high back step to here. You know, we just got up to here. I'm looking for that knee right away. Got the knee, drive in, step out, and now he's here. He's here, just trying to do that. And I've gotten behind him on there. Let's do two more. I've got my hand around the waist. Reach for the knee, drive in, back step, and take side mount. Last one. Hold the waist. Look, there's his knee. Grab his knee, drive in, back step. Okay. And it's always that easy, I promise. Just kidding, it's not always that easy. Sometimes I'm in dogfight, right? And I see his knee, but you know, his legs are long, my arms are short, he's flexible, there's a bunch of reasons this would happen, but I can't reach, right? His knees are here and here. So I, you know, I mean, I can't reach that other one. But what happens when someone does that, even if they're, like, if they're flexible or whatever, is that you'll still be able to see their foot in here, in that space there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, this was the waist I had my hand around, right? That was here. I can't reach that knee, but this hand, the waist hand, can reach their foot. Now again, remember why this is a good position. They can't go around to head to head in a turtle situation because I've got their leg uh, and, and me holding their waist uh, doesn't help either. So when I let go for a second, it's okay. Uh, I don't make it, don't do it all day. But what I'm doing is I'm going from the waist to the foot to this foot right here, okay? And I'm reaching over it. So I find it here, I'm hooking. I'm hooking the waist to hooking the foot and I pull it forward. That motion looks like that. So yeah, how good is my base now? Not very good backwards, that's for sure, right? I would fall that way. Here it's pretty good. Here I still got a knee post, okay? But when, when you reached in, when you handed this forward to this hand is what we're gonna do. Um, my base becomes garbage, right? Backwards. So from here, I'm gonna hand the foot forward to this one. This one is palm up. So hook the waist, hook the foot. And now I've got it here hooked. Now go back to the waist and I'm, and I'm gonna do this. I've got his foot. <laughs> here, and now my hand on his waist, so I have all I need to pull him backwards. So that's the whole move. I was here, couldn't reach, hand it forward, get the foot, get the waist again, tip him backwards, and just come back to side out here, okay? I'm here, can't reach the knee, right? I look underneath, I can't reach it, I get the foot instead. Foot, waist, tip him backwards. I'll talk, I'll talk through that slow one more time. Got the waist, here are the legs. Knees like here though, I can't reach it for some reason. So I go to the foot behind us, pass it forward, which does this to him. Pass it forward, hold it with my hand facing me like a come here, come here foot. Hold the waist now, 
you just pass this forward and hand it up. Now go back to the waist because hip control is such a good control and tilt them backwards. Take side mount here. I'm just sort of knee shuffling to get on top of side mount. Okay, so let's do that movement three more times. Got the waist, can't reach the knee. Here's the foot pass off, back to the waist, tip them backwards, and good. Dog fight. Look across underneath. You can't reach the knee, so reach the foot with your left hand, pass it forward, hold the waist, tip them backwards. Again, when you're here, you know, don't drive into them. There's base over there, but where there isn't base is 90 degrees across the shin, which is always true. Always true when we're kneeling, okay? Last one, holding the waist, look, reach, can't reach the knee. So do the ankle, pass it forward, hold on to it, get the waist again, tilt them back. Okay, you just did this too. And got on top. So that's if, that's if you can't reach the knee. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the wizard. The wizard is the other problem from, from dogfight. When I am next to someone here, and I'm this guy, and my leg is caught, and there's somebody like kind of barreling into me, a lot of times people reach back and over between our bodies, but over the arm, it's across my back. So they're putting it in the, in the armpit here. Boop. And the idea is that I can like throw you with it, kind of almost like a hip toss kind of motion, throw you around, uh, uh, maybe, maybe like kind of try and do some sort of like ground judo. Okay. So the wizard, it does present a problem because you're going to find that you can't progress this way to get their knee or the foot. Uh, you're going to be stuck here unless you know, unless you have some ideas. But the good news is getting your arm out is like not only easy, but you can look cool doing it. So I'm going to back up a little bit so I can see everything. All right. Now, I'm here. They put a wizard and the effect on me is kind of this, ooh, right? They reach over into that space and they're crushing that down and they're trying, you know, they're trying to throw me into the ground or do something to me, right? So what I'm going to do is this, look away. Look away, let my arm loose, we limp arming. And I'm gonna pull it out, air guitar, and then put a harness in on the back. What just happened was they were doing this. You, when you limp armed out and came around, you're able to, uh, sorry, this one's coming out, to put this harness on, okay? So from dogfight, you know, the arm around the waist, lower that shoulder. That's the effect of the wizard, okay? Lower that shoulder. Now you're mimicking what they're going to be doing to you. Now, look away, limp arm, and air guitar. Boom. The harness I'm putting in at the end, after I air guitar, I'm coming under their armpit on the far side, right across their neck on the near side. So my harness is over on the near side. Okay. Dog fight, we're going to do three more air guitars. Dog fight, look away, limp arm, and air guitar. Okay. And remember that the, the arm you just swung comes under the armpit. And the near side goes like you would punch their face, which maybe you want to also do, also do. But puts your harness in right at the neck because the near side is the over. Okay, from here, Ugh. right? The arm over the waist, they crush you down a little bit. Look away, air guitar, and put that harness in. Last time, hold the waist. That side gets crushed down as they, as they try to wizard you down. Look away, limp arm out. And there's our, there's our harness, okay? Like I said, look cool doing it. Whoa, Matt's. Yeah, welcome to the new studio. Okay, lastly, uh, this is the last one we're gonna do. If they, from dogfight, are really cranking down on you, right? They're going, um, cranking down. I'm next to them and I'm going, oh, holy cow. There's a lot, I can't, I mean, I can't even uh, posture up uh, if I, if I, Look when I try to do this, like there, there's a lot of power there and it's a sort of an unrelenting pressure. Uh, whatever makes you decide to do that, maybe you just think this move's cool because this is a crowd pleaser. Air guitar, crowd pleaser. This move, crowd pleaser. It's good stuff. So my hands over the back, there's a lot of pressure here. You know, you need your hand for bass because otherwise it's your face. Okay, so in this moment, you're basing on your hand. But when I decide to go, I'm gonna put this hand against their far knee. Now I'm not tapping the knee to go, so I don't need to reach as far. Right, so the, the width of the knee further to hook it, but I'm just stopping the inside of the knee. I'm just doing this, not all of this. Okay, so I, I was here, maybe I'm even on my elbow because it's crushing me down. Reach across, block the inside of that knee. That's a block, not a catch. Block it. Now, remember that their knees and their feet are here. I'm gonna put this knee right against their knee, okay? 
So I'm reaching in and then I'm putting this here. Now, when somebody cranks down, you're gonna roll, okay? Here, here, okay. So, they're cranking down, it's real hard. Maybe you're on your elbow even, right? If you're on your elbow, you're not gonna air guitar. You're not gonna look away, you know, there's just not room, there's not air space for that. Okay, so on my elbow. And now, think about where their farney is. Knee ones, near ones between your legs. Far one's right here. Just block the inside of it. Just this. Just block the inside. Okay, block the inside. And this knee comes across. You pitch your knees together toward them, essentially. But their knee, remember, is here. And you're you're blocking their knee while you block the other knee on the inside. And their arm on that side is wrapped over in here so they can't catch themselves. So this is a good rolling reversal. Here, they'll be over your body for just a moment, and then you're on top. Okay? The reason I mentioned they're over your body for a moment is if you're... Uh, doing it to one of our bigger guys, you're going to feel their weight for a moment. But this is a little guy move. I mean, this is a great move to do against big guys if you're a not as big guy. Okay, so let's do a few of them. Okay, from here, I'm getting crushed down maybe to my elbow. Oh, man, this guy's strong. Okay, block the inside knee, block the outside knee. That's my hand and my knee. Block both knees. That's how I'm going to say it. Block both knees, roll under. That's it. When you get on top, you'll be on top of half guard. If you're quick, you pull your, you'll extract your leg, it'll be good. Okay, so from here, I'm getting crushed down, okay? Block both knees, that's with my hand and my knee. Block both knees, roll over your shoulder. This is kind of a, not even a shoulder roll, right? Shoulder roll, we don't like log roll like this. So we're just log rolling kind of over. All right. From here, ugh, it's crushing me down. He's whizzering me and he's strong. Or he got me before I had tensed up, created any foundation for myself. Okay, block both knees, roll underneath. And when you get on top, if you're, you know, like I said, if you're quick and you can extract your leg right away, you're good. This is our last one. Okay, dog fight. They're crushing me down, maybe in my elbow. Okay, I'm gonna block both knees. Block both knees, roll over. And when you land, you'll be in top of half guard. Okay, so, you know. So happy to be broadcasting from here uh, for you guys. Uh, happy to have had a successful move. Curious about my next 14 days since I was just exposed to a lawyer and a witness for the closing and then like five movers and then the cable guy and the dog trainer. And so uh, I'm quarantining, gonna quarantine pretty good for the next little bit. Um, but at least I have this here for us, right? So uh, I look forward to bringing you more classes from here. And thanks for joining on YouTube. And we'll see you guys soon. All right, get these off. Sure you want to end your stream? Yeah. Later. Boom.